Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a video for you around how you can use Airflow to create a full data processing pipeline uh, using Airflow for the first level of ingestion, just doing that kind of basic extraction data, but then using Databricks for the heavyweight data processing, using that actually for some model training in conjunction with Delta Store, um, and also taking the raw data that we're ingesting from Airflow uploading that into Snowflake in parallel, and then at the end of that Databricks job, also uploading that ML training data and the results of that into a separate Snowflake table. Um, so really a 360 pipeline for, you know, kind of the modern data processing workflow where you're likely using that data for some kind of ML job or some kind of ML processing, but you also want to save that raw data. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, if you like these videos, please like and subscribe. It helps me out immensely. Um, but won't waste any more time on begging for my supper, and uh, let's start coding. So the first thing we're gonna do is set up a fresh Airflow environment. So what we'll do is just cd into desktop, get repos, then make directory prepros dbx, cd into that, and then astro dev init to just use the astro cli to create a blank Airflow environment, which then we will just open right here. So repos, process DBX, awesome. So now we have our Airflow environment, uh, which will run on a local machine for this. Um, and then first thing we'll need to do is go to our requirements.txt file and start uploading all the different packages and requirements we'll need. Um, so here we are going to need actually quite a list um, because we're connecting to so many different services. So number one, AWS, we're gonna use S3 uh, as our staging area for uploading data into Snowflake. You can't upload data directly into Snowflake from Airflow, you'll need to use a staging area. Um, we're also going to use uh, Databricks, obviously, for our Databricks integration, leveraging Databricks, Snowflake integration, um, HTTP for API request support, um, also Common SQL for Common SQL functionality, just running raw SQL queries within Snowflake. Um, this is honestly where I think Airflow is starting to trend towards is people using uh, raw SQL instead of dedicated operators for each database, but you know, still up for debate. So you can sub this out for a Snowflake operator if you wanted to. Um, you also have the Snowflake connector Python for uh, using writing, running Python code within Snowflake, um, Pandas for data processing within Airflow, Bluetooth 3 for interacting with that S3 bucket, um, and then PyArrow. So this is Parquet support for Snowflake. So let's just use Parquet files, which are a little bit uh, you know, more efficient to actually upload in than CSVs or the like. Um, so we have all our requirements uh, here. So the next thing we're gonna do is start building our DAG. So here we'll just call this prepros.dag. And then begin by doing what we normally do in our Airflow DAGs and just importing a whole series of different packages and requirements. So here we are going to bring in uh, our DAG object, uh, local file system to S3 operator. We also have, I don't know, not, not DAG, what am I doing? Sorry, coffee's still hidden, so preproc.py. Um, build for a local file system S3 operator, so this will let us upload files from Airflow into S3. S3 key sensors, so we can have this happen asynchronously where uh, we're going to detect a file arriving in S3 and then upload it. Uh, we also have our Databricks Run Now operator for running a Databricks notebook, um, our Snowflake operator for running Snowflake operations, S3 hook for interacting with that S3 bucket and pulling and moving data around in it. Uh, also our date time function as we have in pretty much every DAG for using solid date time objects that won't break. Uh, and then JSON as well for handling those API requests where we're pulling the initial data from. Um, so once we have all our packages and requirements set up, we're also going to want to set up a list of constants. Um, you can also set these at the environment variable level just for the purposes of ease of use here. I'm going to include them in the DAG, but definitely not best practices. Um, so here you're gonna to wanna to set S3 bucket, raw S3 key, um, process S3 key, so just different names for our data, different prefixes for where we're gonna store raw versus process data. Um, and then also our Databricks job ID. So this is the Databricks job um, that will have a notebook attached to it that I'm gonna show you the code for in a second. Um, we also have our connection ID, so our Snowflake connection, however you're defining that. Raw table, the table where you'll wanna upload our raw data into. and as separately a model results table. So where we're gonna store the model results that come from our Databricks operations. And then here we have our schema and database where both of these tables are gonna be stored. Then finally here, just Databricks default. So you have the name for your Databricks connection. 
If it's saved as Databricks default though, you actually don't need to have it defined on Databricks connections. It'll automatically do that. Um, that's just a little pro tip there. So then once you've got all those uh, variables set, next step is actually defining our DAG object. Um, and here we're setting some default arguments, just pretty typical stuff here, nothing really to write home about. Uh, DAG definition, again, just setting it daily, catch up false, and then we can start defining our different tasks. So now the first task we're gonna define here is our task to load some raw data into S3. So just to keep it simple, since honestly the data ingestion is the easiest part, I'm just gonna, we have some local file here. Uh, so this is something, you know, hey, it's in the include directory if you wanna test this, data.json, um, add whatever data you want here. And then within this path, just set include data JSON. I have a bunch of other videos where I show you how to generate fake data. Um, I'm just feeling lazy today. And then here we're gonna use is our destination key. Uh, so that S3 bucket um, and the raw S3 key, so it goes in the right place for uh, just raw data. Um, and then also our AWS connection ID here. Then our next task is going to be waiting for that raw data. Um, so just in case there's any delay, we're gonna have a task that's actually gonna to check to make sure that data has arrived before we upload that data in the Snowflake. And this is also good if you wanna have a sense that's just checking for someone else loading data into this S3 bucket. So maybe you're actually not uploading it from your local file system, but someone else is gonna load it. This is a really great way if you have it in deferrable mode um, to just run an asynchronous operation and say, hey, keep checking. And then whenever this data arrives in this location, then trigger the downstream operations. Then our third step is going to be loading raw data into Snowflake. So like I said, we're gonna do this in parallel to our Databricks operations. So here we have load raw into Snowflake, Snowflake operator here, and then we just have some basic SQL, um, just calling Snowflake database schema and loading the raw data from that S3 bucket. And we're just building that via Jinja templates. Um, so super basic operation there, just loading raw data into Snowflake. Then in parallel, we're going to trigger a Databricks job that's going to do the large scale processing and ML training. Um, and so don't worry, even though it looks simple here, I'll show you the notebook code you'll use as well. Um, but really all you need to do is just hey, the job ID, connection ID you're gonna use, um, and then this will trigger that to run within Databricks. Um, and then all the logic of really how that data is gonna be accessed from S3, everything that has to occur within Databricks. So I'll show you what that notebook looks like in a second. Um, and then, Next thing we're gonna do is wait for process data. So the results of this Databricks run job operation is going to be putting some data into that process location we defined via those S3 keys. So here, what we're gonna do is wait for that process data um, in a you know every 10 minute timeout, every one minute, um, and then you know 10 minute timeout if it goes over 600 minutes. Um, and then finally, what we're gonna do is load our process data into Snowflake using some stored procedures. Um, so again, I'll show you what this looks like to write within Snowflake, but we're gonna leverage some more kind of templated procedures for loading process data from this S3 bucket into our process data table, our new RML model results table. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like in a second as well. But just to finish off the DAG here, we then have our DAG dependencies. So pretty basic as well, um, except we have, it kind of forks into two paths. So we have uh, you know raw, uploading the raw data, then loading that raw data into Snowflake, triggering that Databricks job, um, and then in parallel to loading that raw data to Snowflake, triggering Databricks is gonna go wait for that process data to arrive from Databricks and then load that into Snowflake as well. So that's our DAG code set up. Now, a lot of the heavyweight logic is going to actually occur within this Databricks notebook file. So this is something you could either upload in the Databricks and reference via job ID, or what you could do is actually create a notebook and run it from Databricks, slightly different code, um, but just I'm gonna keep it this way for simplicity's sake, as most pilot times people like to write their code within Databricks. Um, but just so I don't have to break out of VS Code, I'm gonna keep it here. Um, and so here within our Databricks notebook, we're going to need to install a few different packages. So Spark Session, Column, uh, Feature Store, so we can access the Databricks Feature Store and you know, store our, our ML values. Um, delta Tables for interacting with Delta Tables, using that for data storage as well. Pandas is PD for data manipulation. Um, and then we have random forest classifier, train test split and accuracy score for the type of model we're using, how we're gonna split our data into testing and training data, and then also assess the accuracy of the results of that model training. Um, so once we have all those set up, then we're going to initialize Spark and then set it up to read uh, data from that S3 bucket. So here, Spark Session Builder, Databricks ETL, 
Um, and then here we're going to raw data path. And this is also something you, know, you could replace Databricks with, with Spark here um, if you just want to run Spark elsewhere, but assuming you're going to be using Databricks here. Um, and then here what we have is reading the stream, so reading that data in JSON format, the raw data from the S3 bucket, and loading it in as a data frame. Then, so then once we have the data frame in, we're going to then do some basic transformations. Um, and here we're just going to say, hey, check for some not null values, and then convert this data frame into a pandas data frame. So there's a Spark data frame, and then there's a pandas data frame. So that's key distinction here. So we're converting it to that pandas data frame via PD. Um, and then next, we're going to start doing some model training. So here we're going to give, get our testing and training data sets, but first defining our targets. Um, so here we are going to have our x values, our, our target value is our x, um, or sorry, our x is all the columns, so all the features that aren't our target value, and y is whatever column you're trying to generate predictions for. So you know these would be all the columns around the customer, the Y would be maybe what type of customer this is. Um, and then here we're going to then take that split of target columns versus, you know, the, our target column versus the feature columns and then split it, our data into the typical 80-20 split. Uh, you can adjust the random state of what data gets put into what category uh, here via the random state. And then once we're done with that, we're then going to use the random forest classifier to fit a model. Um, so here we're going to do 100 layers of estimators. Um, and then we're going to fit X train and Y trances randomly checking uh, correlations between different data points. If you want to know more about random forest classifier, go check it out yourself. Um, and I'll, maybe I'll make a video for it. If you are really interested, drop info in the comments. Um, so then we're going to fit our X training data and our Y training data there, and then use that to then try to predict some Y values via our testing data set. Um, and then based on the accuracy of our tested or predicted Y values versus our actual Y tested values, um, we're then going to assess the accuracy score and then print that out here just so you have that available in the logs. And um, that'll also appear in the logs and the airflow side of things, which is good. Um, and then what we're gonna do is prepare some results. So just clean up our results tables for actually uploading it. So here we're gonna have our predictions data frame, our Y test, X test index, and then what they actually predicted. Create a data frame with our predictions and the actual values, and then save that via Delta Lake. Um, so here we are going to process data path, write that into an S3 bucket, um, and then just write format Delta, overwrite the previous process data there. So assuming you're uploading each chunk of data into Snowflake, and then you're okay to overwrite that previous chunk. Um, and then finally, and this is just if you don't want to have the saving to Snowflake occur via Airflow, you also can up, uh, write it directly from your Databricks job. It's really up to you. I just wanted to show a few different options on kind of how you could handle this operation here. Um, so this is the Databricks notebook you're going to need to have this DAG actually run. The other thing you'll need is this load process data stored function. Um, so this is a bit simpler, but this is basically just going to help you handle data ingestion a little bit more efficiently by not requiring you to have a lot of complex SQL um, actually within you know, your SQL statement. You just have kind of macros like you have in DBT. So snowflake uh, procedure.sql. Um, and then here what we're gonna do is just define a SQL join command or create a replace procedure. So if it doesn't already create or exist, create a new raw data table. Um, and then here copying from that source URL, which is going to be our, Snowflake, our S3 bucket, um, saying, hey, is the raw data loaded successfully? Um, loading also, uh, the, if it's process data, then returning that process data um, and loading it into the model results table. Um, and you'll see these like load process data source URL, these are being passed at runtime via this change of, temp change of templates. Um, so that's what load process data, it's gonna reference this S3 bucket and then know to pull it from that URL um, and then copy it in a table. So that's the source URL here. That is everything I wanted to show you in this video. I just kind of want to give you a you know, kind of 360 pipeline of how you can use Airflow, Databricks, Snowflake together, three of the most popular tools. So I thought it was only relevant to bring them all in one place. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Daddy guy out.